Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 29th of May 2021 and we're publishing our Gold and Silver weekly update for the week ending the 28th of May. We also briefly look at political events and economic reports which could shape what happens to both the US dollar and therefore precious metal prices. So let's take a look. Now, before we talk about what happened last week, just a reminder that we published three quite important videos. Gold $1,900 and silver $28 where next? Gold and silver reaction to US economic data, worth listening to that. And Bitcoin and cryptos fall while gold and silver rise. And we've listed these in the description box below for ease of access. Now, gold rose $22 last week from $1,882 to $1,904. Yes, it's closed above 1900 having hit a high of 1912 and a low of 1873, a rise of 1.2%. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,342. That's up £12. And in euros, it closed at €1,561. That's up €17. Euros. Silver rose 34 cents from $27.59 to $27.93, having hit a high of $28.25 and a low of $27.42. Like gold, a rise of 1.2%. In sterling terms, silver closed at £19.69. pence. That's up 19 pence. And in euros, it closed at €22.92. Euros. That's up 0 0.27 euros. The gold to silver ratio remains steady at 68.2 to 1. Bitcoin is down $3,000 at 37170 though it's $1,000 higher than when we processed the price on Saturday last week because we gave Saturday's price rather than the Friday's price which we've taken today. The Dow Jones closed on Friday at 34,529 up 64 points on the day and up 322 points on the week. The S&P 500 closed at 4,204, up 3 points on the day and up 49 points on the week. And the Nasdaq Composite closed at 13,748, that's up 12 points on the day and up 278 points on the week. So we have all rises in those major exchanges. Brent crude closed at $69.63, up $3.19, pushing for that $70 again. And WTI crude closed at $66.32, and that's up $2.74 on the week. The dollar index stands at 90.03, so closing above an important benchmark but that's up a meagre 0.02 on the week. Now, we concluded last week's video with the following forecast. Quote, so our gold trading range for this coming week is strengthened slightly between 1800 and 1900, with 1750 and 1975 as outliers, and silver trading between 27 and 2875, with 2650 and 2950 as outliers. Well, gold closed marginally above our normal trading range by $4. It did the same last week by $5, but remained well within our outlier range. And silver remained well within our normal range without threatening any of the extremities. In relation to gold, we could see that it rose upon opening, peaked on Wednesday, and remained robust thereafter, regaining additional strength not long before its close on Friday an almost exact repeat performance as last week. We pointed out that Friday being a strong day to day in terms of amount of data being published could indeed have quite an impact and it certainly put gold back into the bull camp even if some were doubtful earlier. 
inflationary fears are no doubt maintaining a tailwind behind gold, and a rising national debt is causing severe concern. The sheer volume of money printing is almost beyond imagination, and Congress, as we reported yesterday, or the day before, is battling over a 1-2 to two trillion infrastructure spend, which will add to both money printing and increasing the national debt, at least in the short to medium term, until any economic benefits were received from that spend, which could be quite a while. Again, we mentioned on Thursday that gold moving and holding above 1900 will next be tested at 1915 and then again will hit further resistance at 1950-51, a major Fibonacci level. On the downside, we have supported 1885 and 1863 and psychological support at $1,850. We've stated for a few weeks now about our renewed bullishness in gold rather than silver short term, until there was sufficient evidence that the global economy was rebounding considerably out of recession. And then when that happens, we will certainly see silver gain ahead of steam. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting closer. S well, we hope so. Silver behaved similarly to gold last week, rising on opening, peaking on Wednesday, falling back a little and then rebounding again on Friday. Silver is struggling, though, to break out and hold above $28, and we then have a number of resistance points between 28 and the next target it needs to reach and pass, and that is the $30 level, because it needs to get above that for its next major leap forward. We actually see this happening this year, but simply not quite yet. To the downside, there is major support at $26, and again, we do not really envisage seeing that level broken either. There would have to be some pretty serious fault lines in global recovery for that to happen. In two of the videos we mentioned at the start of this, we highlighted a range of economic data announced this week, showing good jobless claims improvement, but relatively weak durable goods orders and pending home sales for April. Well, earlier yesterday, personal income figures were terrible for April, minus 13.1% compared with plus 20.9% in March. Consumer spending fell to just 0.5% compared with 4.7%. And core inflation has risen to 0.7% compared with 0.4% a month earlier. These figures bolstered equity markets because of envisaged additional stimulus needs and of course acted as a tailwind for both gold and silver in a monetary demand aspect as opposed to an industrial demand aspect. Looking forward to this coming week, we have some very crucial data which we are confident will most certainly move markets. Not necessarily on Monday because it's Memorial Day so there's nothing scheduled. But Tuesday's noteworthy, we have the Market Manufacturing PMI final and the ISM Manufacturing Index final, both for May and Construction Spending for April. On Wednesday, we have Motor Vehicle Sales for May and the Beige Book. Important day Thursday, we have the ADP Employment Report for May, weekly, weekly jobless claims, plus Productivity Revision for Quarter 1, and the Market Services PMI and ISM Services Index, both for May. And then on Friday, crucial day, non-farm payrolls, unemployment rate, average hourly earnings, all for May, and also factory orders for May. So Tuesday, Thursday and Friday are three very important days, with Friday being the cruncher and, in our view, the ultimate determinator of precious metals and their direction for the summer months. There is a lot on the political landscape and the economic landscape too, but frankly from the political perspective, as long as there are no major physical conflicts between the US and any other major country, we do not envisage much happening to seriously affect markets on that political front 
more so on any economic news. We are quite interested in what's happening in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies though, because we suspect there is some foul play going on by some major players wanting to enter the market who are actually talking the market down in advance in order to obtain cryptos at a cheaper price. There are quite a few rumours about two or three major financial institutions embarking on such measures and if true then we could potentially see another major leg up particularly in Bitcoin and Ethereum in a few weeks time but we'll have to wait and see. So our gold trading range for this coming week is strengthened further with regular trading between $1850 and $1950 with $1800 and $1995 we're not quite predicting 2000 this week as outliers and silver trading between $27 and $28.75 with $26.50 and $29.50 as outliers so we're not quite seeing gold reaching 2000 or silver reaching 30 we suspect silver may lag slightly but again a lot depends on the economic data being announced what do you think do share your thoughts Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel, not forgetting to press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. And to all of you, have a safe, enjoyable weekend, which is elongated because it's a bank holiday in the UK and Memorial Day in the United States, and a most prosperous week ahead. Disclaimer. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.